Hercules is trying to be the hero he once was, but overall, he might become a villain. I'm Stan, and welcome to Detail Comics, where we go over comics in detail. This is an irate review, where we're going to go over Avengers No Road Home number 4 from Al Ewing, Mark Wade, Jim Zub, and art by Paco Medina. This maxi-series that is going to be taking up 10 issues is hitting almost the midway point, and we're seeing the tide turn when it comes to the Avengers and what's really stacked against them as they try to track down the shards of Nyx's soul and prevent her from becoming whole again. As of right now, Hercules is on the opposite side of the heroes due to some magical mumbo-jumbo from this dark guy. God, and we're going to get into, well, a fight inside somebody's nightmares. But let's dive in and see what those things are all about. While Paco Medina has been handling art duties for the majority of Avengers No Road Home at this point in time, the story by Al Ewing, Jim Zub, and Mark Wade gets Sean Izaxi, and he actually does a really good job interpreting and kind of replicating Paco Medina's work with his own unique style. And in this issue, we actually get a little bit more backstory regarding Nyx, the goddess of night. In the beginning, there was just darkness, and then the coming of Zeus, which brought light to her universe, because she was the first of them, a god conjured up from the ever-expanding darkness of the early universe. And with the Olympians, and as they grew in power, they grew in followers, they propagated and created even more gods. Gods of the hearth, gods of the harvest, gods of the forge, gods of the sun, Apollo, Artemis, Athena. Everybody just became an expanse of Olympians that started to bask in the glow of their own deeds. And as Nyx is part of this society, she brings a dimness. She darkens the light of Olympus. And as witness to this, she sees the Olympians having children, and it brings them happiness. So she has a dream, and as a result of this dream, Dream. She has a child three days later, and this is Hypnos. Hypnos, the son of Nyx, the goddess of night. And his unsleeping legions are the defenders of the night that she cherished so much. And with this backstory for the Olympians and Nyx, we get a little bit more character development for the villain, which is always something that's relatively suspect inside some Marvel comic books. But this gives us a little bit better insight into her actual character and how the children of night came to be. So when we bounce back over to Nightmare's realm, we have have a better idea of what Hypnos is actually doing and how he's commanding these legions of individuals, these mortals that are being driven towards Nightmare's fortress. It's a modern army. These people are in pajamas and they're walking around in their boxers and their t-shirts as they try to fire these catapults into the walls of Nightmare's fortress. This is a continuation of the story that Nyx is currently telling. As Hypnos developed these unsleeping legions, this army of the sleepless, also humans caught their own taste of light. They created fire, and fire kept the darkness at bay, and they gave in to storytellers, magicians, you know, conjurers, and as they told stories of how the tiger god was kept at bay because of the light, and how the god king ended the reign of the night witch, and how great poets and writers captured the stories of the Olympians and their deeds, they defined the evils of the world. Nyx became the adversary for the Olympians, and as the Olympians gained more and more followers, bringing their light to more and more people, Nyx just felt betrayed because she never felt welcomed in Olympus, and this betrayal took the form of her twins, Apate and Dolos, deceit and trickery. And as they played little tricks around Olympus, conflict became something that couldn't be really avoided, and she had bred her children for that. Hypnos, the commander of unsleeping legions, deceit and trickery, these are tools to be used in the war against Olympus. And then we can actually flash back to Omnipotent City. We've seen some of the work of Apate and Dolos, they're causing misdirection, the daggers embedded with lies, burying themselves in Hercules, and now he's fighting against his own Avengers comrades, crushing the Vision's head. And this is while Spectrum and Wanda are trying to track everybody down, but hallucinating multiple Hercules as they're trying to kind of save this librarian. Unfortunately for Apate and Dolos, because they're connected to this dark energy that's powering the goddess of darkness, Scarlet Witch still has a connection and she can pick everybody out. However, that was just a misdirection, because Voyager is a searcher. She can create portals. She can track people down and send them places, and last we saw her, she was captured by misery. Nyx shows up, and the conflict wages on. We flash back into the past, where we actually see the conflict between the Children of Darkness and the Olympians. I feel like, even though this isn't Paco Medina's work, it's a really good representation of the individual characters, and I like the style in which they're being drawn. It's not a super huge departure, which gives it a little bit more consistency inside the book. I mean, when you get into the next page where you see Poseidon reigning as Trident over the top of Nyx, Zeus holding his lightning bolts, the, the whole concept of this and the way that it's represented inside the imagery, inside the artwork, I really dig it. But Zeus reaches his hand inside the chest of Nyx, tears out a shard of her soul, and then breaks it into three pieces. The night that was, the night that is, the night that may yet be. And those are the shards 
that she's on the hunt for. And when he finally was done breaking apart the pieces of her soul, he bound her in chains and cast her into the pits of darkness, almost like Tartarus. Now she was there with her children, and this is when she felt misery. She felt pain. She felt vengeance. She wished for revenge, and she birthed out her fourth child, Misery, who took this lizard-like shape inside the dark. And when she had the opportunity, the Challenger and the Grandmaster plucked the Earth out of space-time. The sun no longer shined on the Earth's surface, and the spell that Zeus had cast was broken. She was free, and she took the opportunity to hunt down the Olympians and knock them down a peg, destroying Olympus, setting it on fire, and casting the world in darkness. I really like this origin story. It's giving me a lot more information on the backstory. You can almost feel a bit more sympathy because the darkness is misunderstood. It just gives her enough character so that that way you can feel something. However, the methods that she goes about achieving her goals make her clearly the villain, which is always a really good way to represent a character like that. But now that she reached Omnipotent City, she walks past the Avengers as if they're no threat at all, plunges her hand through the body of the librarian, and plucks out the knight that was without breaking a sweat at all. And this leaves us to two more shards, one that is with an ally that we have yet to meet, and one that is still sitting in the Land of Nightmares. And Land of Nightmares is being defended by, well, let's say a little bit more aggressive force than the Avengers that were at Omnipotent City. Because as Hypno storms the capsule of Nightmare, he actually sees one of the coolest things that's in the entire book, and that has to be the immortal Hulk on the back of Nightmare's steed with this green glowing fire, red eyes of ruby that are just penetrating. You've got Rocket with his laser gun, Hawkeye with his bow, but a dark onyx blade inside the hands of the immortal Hulk as he rides Nightmare Steed is just the coolest visual and setting up the story, the actual battle that's going to be taking place in issue number five between Hypnos, the Sleepless Army, and the rest of the different pieces of this conflict. As far as Avengers No Road Home goes, again, Jim Zub, Mark Wade, and Al Ewing do a fantastic job when it comes to the story and the scripting, the pacing. I feel like it is just non-stop action and the development of the Avengers characters. Avengers books or team-up books in general are really heavy on the action because there's very little time for developing individual characters. However, these books have taken the moments necessary to develop individuals in a much better way. So in issue number one, we just got the assembly of the Avengers. In issue number two, we got a story about Hawkeye. Issue three, we got a story about Rocket Raccoon. And now in issue four, we've got a lot more backstory when it comes to Nyx and the Forces of Darkness. So we're going to continue to get these kind of histories, these different perspectives perspectives, it seems, if the theme continues, inside the books going forward. And then as far as substitute artists, while I love Paco Medina's work, I think that we did a really fantastic job in keeping a consistent kind of flow with an individual character that's a little bit different than Paco Medina's. But I want to know what you guys think, so hit me up in the comments down below and we can start that conversation. As always, if you like what you see, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to get more news, views, and commentary on comic books and more.